Welcome back to Campaign Vicious Circles. It is part 13. We are encroaching on the end of this campaign. It is just going to be part 13 and then part 14. And then we will officially end things off. So the winners or um, the award categories have been announced for Campaign Vicious Circles. So uh, just at the start here, I will read them out so that we can know, you know, what's gonna be, what's up for grabs, basically. So, let's see here. So, the first, uh, I did three categories of my own choosing and then three categories from su player suggestions. Uh, the first category is called Shared Authority. It is to have the least amount of absolutism. So that is, the, of course, this lovely number right here. You wanna have the lowest number of that. Uh, and negatives do count. So, you know, whatever, if it's like negative 20, that counts. Uh, that's the lowest uh, amount of absolutism we have, whatever, I don't know. It's not the end of the game, so we don't know yet. Uh, next one is called, it's all papers and forms, have the highest total administrative efficiency. So that would be this beautiful number right here. Uh, the highest I've seen so far has been like 60%, but you know, there could be higher numbers as we get to the end of the game. We'll see. The next one is called Rivers of Blood, and it's have the highest total army losses in the world. And this includes attrition and uh, losses in battle. So it's really going to be who's been coated in blood or who's been shedding the most blood so far. The next category is called Big Brain Plays, and it was submitted by Mackie. Uh, and it has have the highest amount of inno innovativeness. Obviously, that is this lovely number right up here. And then we have family and friends, which is have the highest amount of total diplomatic relations with colonial nations, each counting as one. So, like if, uh, like Napoleonic Italy, whatever they have, how many do they have right now? They have two currently. And then this colonial nation, Napoleonic Brazil, would be one extra. So that would be three total diplomatic relations. And the last category, our uh, family and friends was submitted by Kravins. And I see no gods up here other than me is the classic one as submitted by McSansel. And that is simply have the highest total development of any nation in the world. Which is going to be this lovely number. Whoever is in first. Anyways, let's get into the action. That must have been a colony that finished. No. No, no, no. These are tr this is trade company provinces. So they're only territorial cores. So when you take one, uh, it's just, you know, the the enemy you took it from doesn't get a core there. It's just a, it doesn't, it doesn't last. Oh, I didn't even know that. Notice this. That's cool. Oh no, are we getting frame drops? Because of war! Um, second Imperial or Gain Imperialist War. So, nothing's happening here. Oh, it's actually the Imperium. So, Loon is in this too. Okay, so Loon wants to pick a fight with my nations. Okay, I see how it is. And the revolutionaries are going after the Low Countries, Paradox, and Argentina. Oh boy. That's... I mean, let's take a look at the quality comparisons right now. Low Countries is lacking that discipline and is lacking that morale and tactics. So good luck. Um, let's lower this down to speed 3. Because there's a lot of troop movements. They're going in, man. They are going in. Loon... I'm not sure... Well, actually, if the Imperium actually does blockade this shit and then... Like... Argaia and Sevleon are confined to the, to the Isles up here... Then... It's just... 
what can they do? They can't reach the mainland. But it's an imperialist war, so don't forget that, so it's the capital right here. Hey, and they already they even got Stonehenge upgraded to the maximum. Nice. Yeah, let's we're just doing speed three right now because there's there's a lot of troop movements. It's it's probably gonna slow my PC down. <laughs> my PC is decently powerful, but it's not unstoppable. And plus EU4 is a pretty old game, it doesn't run as efficiently as newer games probably do. Napoleon, the what are you? No, they're just trying to get to Argentina. Well, at least Paradox has taken the initiative with the Low Countries and in invading the Baltic as well as up here. Argentina, what? Ah, oh, they want Sic they they spy that Sicily could be a target. Thing is, like. Paradox and Low Countries, they gotta get shit rolling. Oh no. That one stack. And what? Oh, Novgorod is actually in this too. That kind of changes the entire dynamic because they got this whole other front to worry about. Oh, I'm not seeing a way out of this. Low Countries, I'm not seeing a way. Ooh. Fierce naval fights. 65 trade ships versus 52 trade ships. Argyle won. What about over here? More trade ships. Oh, and some heavy ships from Argyle. That should be an easy win for, for my boys. Yeah, it's... I like Argentina, it's... It's rough going. The Landsknets got quality and they got like pure sheer numbers in this war it's I wish there was something else that could be done but there isn't yep paradox has got that discipline to be on par but that morale and tactics just isn't there <sighs> it's unfortunate Yep, Argentina's going down too. And Novgorod's piling on too from the east. It's it's not pretty. I forgot to silence my phone. Oh man. Uh let's try speed four. It might be a tad bit choppy, but I hope it's not going to be too choppy. Because I would like to get through the uh, at least enough years to make it so that the end of the campaign is... Or the next part isn't too long. Ugh, the frame drops. I mean, I, once the Landsknechts win, I think it'll be better. Because I know there's no way they don't win... They've got Novgorod on their side. It's, it's, uh, wh what do you, what does one do? Argentina, I, I appreciate you strutting your stuff, but the revolutionaries have this in the bag, and uh, unfortunately. Yeah, and the Imperium's landing over here. It's like this land is really just to make money for Argaya. It's not to be to be doing anything else. Uh, Indian Romans against Republica, Revolutionary War, yeah. That's all that's going on right now. Where is your capital, Republica? Uh-huh. So it's still in Java, despite Java being a veritable mess of colors. I'm just gonna let 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 y'all see how this plays out, cause Paradox, Low Countries, and Argentina, that there's nothing that can be done. 
I also need to drink some water. Ugh. I'm feeling, I'm feeling some seasonal allergies. I see the Imperium is trying to blockade my boy, and it's it's not gonna work. I can tell you that much. Even the peasants are rising up against the Landsknechts in Italy. But it's just what is that? What is that gonna do? Let's actually see how the revolution is taking place. So it's actually spread through most of Loon and Lysimachus and Argentina and Paradox. What would Revolutionary Paradox be like? Like, what would be revolutionary about it? IRL, I mean, not, not in-game. There's a revol company revolution inside Paradox. But what would it be like? I do wonder. If you have an idea about what Revolutionary Paradox would be like, comment it down below. And there it is. Wow, that, they took a lot over here and then oh they took holland they took the capital of the low countries they took a little bit of the baltic they took some stuff in central europe it's just good gods consul philip von sachen how do you do it Uh, I'm, I'm glad that like I've got, I have a plan for next campaign and it, it is to uh, give AI can AI nations or no, uh, vanilla nations uh, four provinces instead of three provinces at the start. That way they aren't uh, they're not like dead in the water uh, one or two centuries in. Now give the, give them a, a fighting chance. Uh, let's see. Pure, yep, yeah, that's... Does that surprise anyone? I don't think so. Sevlion, and yeah. It's... This This is... In, we are in the age of imperialism, and also the age of revolutions. I do gotta say, it is weird seeing, like, Argentine Mexico be on, like, the docket. The like, <laughs> you know, Argentines got Mexico? What is this? Argyans got Canada? What is this? That's because Stide was an idiot and declared war and thinking like, yeah, you know, we can go after them. Despite us not having the navy. Oh my god. It's happening! It's happening! I could not have asked for a better part 13. Where's the where's the hype music? Where is it at? There you go, March on Granada. Let's oh I didn't even get to see the the uh I wanna see the quality comparison. The Imperium just has a shitload more morale. Other than that, they're dead even. So Stide you better pull your fucking shit together and defend where you can or strike hard, strike fast, and don't give up. And this is this is a one-on-one. -on -one. This is a cage match. This is a brawl in North America. You bet your ass I'm going to be glued to this. Imperium is striking into the north, but Stide is up and ready to go into the south. But I mean, the Imperium is there too, and they're cleaning house. That morale advantage is stupidly strong. Ooh. Oh, and that leader, that 2 0 1. Ooh. 2 1 6. Eh. But the, where, where, are you, where are your leaders at? Where are the leaders at? You need leaders. Contention is going to be right around this region of the Mississippi River. Going into the Missouri River. 
Stein, you need to you need to consolidate these forces. You got so many regiments going around. Okay, okay, small victory, small victory. Uh, just real quick, are they doing any mercenaries? Can we tell? Well, I mean, they have, they have all the money they need. Uh, and so does the Imperium. Really, they can build the Panama Canal. Huh. Interesting. All right. Oh God, that was a that was a stack wipe. There's a 300k death stack here, though, because I'm counting this stuff too in the back. Oh my God, that morale is crushing. Holy shit. It's just not enough. It's not enough. Stide has the has like okay numbers, but it, they just can't last in these fights. They're all they're over way too quickly. What is giving them that more? I'm very curious what that morale bonus they got is. Is it because of their ideas? No? Hmm. I'm gonna check. I do want to check. Docile populace. Monarchy 6 mil. And with full elan. That's a lot. And they also got an advisor. Okay. Ooh, okay. So yeah, it's uh, this part of the monarchy idea is that is coming into play. So if you're if your monarch is a really bad military person, you're gonna get less morale, and it's gonna really fucking hurt. But if you have a really good monarch who's like really adept in military stuff, it get, you get really good stuff. So, that's part of, part of it, you know. Oh my goodness. And I believe the Imperium gets morale in their stuff, right? No, they don't. This is all from their ideas. You would think Stein would stand a better chance because they have uh, more infantry fire and infantry shock inherently, but that's just not, that's just not coming into play here. It's just not. Nothing else is really going on. Briefly, I will check on the rest of the world, but it's just... I, I, I'm glued to it. Alright. Yep, Imperium is, gonna, is pushing in. Stide is thinking, like, okay, I can push in from the northwest. You know... Let's divert some resources up there. The Imperium is too strong by the Mississippi River. Maybe we can do something in the in the Northwest. But I don't think that's going to be doing anything else. Because the Imperium, they've caught you out. That's two like, sizable stack wipes. You need to throw out Dutch, uh, this Duchess because she's not... She's just not worth it. Two one three, that's that's better, but eh. Oh my god. But just look what's coming. Oh boy. But the thing about this for the Imperium 2 is their war gold is up here. Like, eh? Are you really gonna be able to get up here? And the same thing, same thing with Stide. Would you, would you be able to get down here? I really don't think so. Actually, they have any? Oh no, they can't upgrade it. They have to be Mayan culture.
I just purely off of like what I'm seeing, I'm thinking that the Imperium has the edge in this over time. They need to keep stack wiping uh they need to keep stack wiping Stide, but to their credit, Stide is sticking it out and making the Imperium run around. What is this song? Discoveries Revealed. I have not seen Stide win a sick a single fight and then not lose a fight directly after that. Like, it, the Imperium, battle-wise, flawless. Almost flawless. But, Stide is being a pest. And on top of that, they have ticking war score. Because the, oh, the Imperium did land stuff up here. Maybe a sneaky sneak route over here could do something. Ling Sang against Japan, that's nothing new. The Imperium has double the forces of Stide at this point. Double! Okay, well not quite, not truly double, but almost. Are you gonna head through the Appalachians and try something? You need you need to address this too. Stein has consolidated their forces. They're 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 pretty weak, but not too weak. They will still fuck you up if they get the chance. Watch yourself. Those forts that. Cracking that fort is not going to be easy. Stide is coming down. They want to address what's happening. What is it going to be? Stide, can you actually take a genuine W? They might. It's looking good. It's a goal. Good shit. All right, the Imperium. Okay, with that loss, like this push entirely just addressed, the Imperium might might consider this war lost. Again, another good win for Steid. The Imperium getting sloppy. Oh god, that's some that's some nasty cutting up between borders. Sides mostly in the south. What is this? What are these guys doing, Imperium? Bring them to the front. You can beat the side in a man-to-man -man fight. That's not out of the question. You just need to like pick them off. Are there, are there any forts down here? Yeah, there are, actually. There are forts scattered across this land, and credit to the AI. Paradox has done pretty good with having the AI build more forts uh, in general across across time. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Zorm AI uh, ha has something to do with the fort placement and all that, and building certain amounts and updating them. But uh, I think from a base level, the AI from Paradox has gotten better, which is great. Because we're seeing it right now, like the, the, the AI, the AI has to get through, you know, for this fort, this one, this one, this one, this one, a whole bunch. Not even just down there, even up here, like they don't make it easy to just carpet siege anymore. You gotta actually burrow your way through your enemy. Yeah. Imperium. 
It's just, uh, what, what, what's gonna be happening? Is it gonna be a stalemate? Oh. Well, okay. So they lost one, two, three provinces. Only three. I think the Imperium was overstretched. And I, I, was, I was sure, like, Stide was just gonna let them get through because they had so many stacks of, like, one regiment going around doing nothing. Like, they were just slowly, slowly consolidating. But, uh... I mean, credit where credit is due. Stide pulled it back. We just got some basic wars. Good luck getting to Japan. They're holding out at Mount Fuji. You know, I thought that the Indian Roman Empire was going to be able to consolidate the, these pockets of land. But now it just looks ugly because Taker is there. And it's not just, it's just, like, why? You look like an infection. You look like diseased skin. Well, then again, cyan or teal skin isn't really a thing, so... Eh? How are those reforms doing for you? Three social classes, revolutionary principle, absolute power of the president. Jesus Christ, man. Stide is still absolutely ridiculous. Not Stide, uh, uh, the Landschmitz. Uh, so the Jacobins are in power, and they give... Oh, let's go. They give construction costs, national unrest... Diplomat or national tax at the cost of diplomatic reputation. The Imperials give state maintenance uh, reduction, diplomatic reputation, and liberty desire from subjects, whilst costing Republican tradition. And the Girondists give manpower recovery speed, land force limit, and discipline at the cost of aggressive expansion. All right. I still find it hilarious, too, how Sevleon just has that one measly province of Kumari at the tip. Has, like, a docking point. If we need to do any operations in Southeast Asia, that's where we dock at. Australia uh, Australia is a fucking mess. New Zealand, eh? Alright, it's not it's not a mess. Credit where credit is due. They consolidated all of, all of New Zealand. Papua New Guinea... Complete fucking mess. But, uh, hey, turn the still alive. They're a vassal Ding Sang, but, uh, you know, they're, they're alive. Somehow. This province is not colonized. Somehow. Oh, they're supporting the independence of New Solana. Mmm. Rife for happenings. Oh. Oh, the Republica is now a vassal. Now that's interesting. And what's also interesting is Wakanda's dead. Wow. Yeah, Wakanda fully annexed. Um who was uh, who was the last two? And actually, you know what? I think I know what happened. So, Wakanda took this land over that Taker had because Taker could not get to Wakandan land or they were too busy or whatever. So, Wakanda gained ticking war score. They enforced peace on Taker and took back that land. The Ptolemies came through. They just full annexed Wakanda after that. So, I think, I think that's probably what happened. And, yeah. Greeks hating on Wakanda. Who would have thought? Ling Sang, who are you at war with down here? You're at war with a lot. What the f Oh yeah, the Indian Roman Empire is allied with the Imperium. Therefore, China and Indians go and at it. I think we're probably going to go to like 1780. 
Oh, my back. I twisted it the wrong way. But this doesn't hurt too much. When they start fighting, I want to see the quality checks. Where did you get it? Where did you get to? Oh, there's... I see that 101,000. Wow! Oh, my, I just popped my left elbow. Ah, uh, it feels better now. Uh-oh. Ooh, we almost had a crash. Almost. Does that mean a war starting? No. Probably just troops getting in order. Ling Sang is, actually, is under active threat, though. Under... Oh, no. Okay, we're lowering down to speed three. Oh, Napoleonic Italy. That true that, that alliance with the Indian Romans is no longer there. So Ling Sang had... I don't think they're probably... Well, it depends on, on where the... Uh, where the holdings are split at. I mean, uh, the, the forces for each of them are split at. Because Ling Sang and the Indian, Indian Romans both have a lot of land down here. So they could be dedicating forces down here. Case in point, Ling Sang right here. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if the Indian Romans have anything over here. It doesn't look like they do. The Indian Romans actually have a lot in Japan, and that's not doing anything for them. So, we're going to see how that affects the war. Why are the Seleucids? What? The oh, the Seleucids are out at Ling Sang! Oh, shit! This is bigger than I thought! Oh, shit! I thought I saw the Seleucids battling it out with the Indian Romans, but I, I, I brushed it off. No! This is not just Condottieri. They're actually in this. This is actually a huge fucking war. Holy shit. No wonder the game was having trouble like processing. There's a lot of troops being moved. This entire land is just going to be a gateway from the Seleucids to the Indian Romans and vice versa. Indian Romans, you need to get those 600,000 in order. You need to take that those troops out from over here and bring them back. Something. Because this war is about to get really fucking heated. You got the Western Front. You've got the Eastern Front. Ling Sang, they have a direct corridor to your lands over here in Malaya and Sumatra, as well as, well, your heartland. Oh, shit. Seleucids fielding 600,000. The thing is, I, the Seleucids also... Dedicating a little bit over here because Taker has some uh, has some land in North Africa. Oh, we have what? Why do you want to go after my boy? Why the Landsknets against Sevlion and Argaya? Oh Nizhny. Oh Nizhny. Oh yeah, we're keeping it on speed three at this point. Nizhny <laughs> dwarfs Novgorod. <laughs> oh no, Novgorod. One million, just one M, one M. That's it. And Taklimata's in this true What? Oh, it's uh, they're hired out. Okay. This is very fitting music. This land is forfeit, but you know what isn't forfeit? Scandinavia! The Landschnitz. They know what's what. They want to defend Novgorod. Sevlion. I don't, I don't think Sevlion can defend this. 
they're they're trying. They're trying to dedicate some forces, but I don't know. Let's see that quality comparison. Novgor Nizhny Novgorod is competent on that discipline. They just don't have the morale. But against Novgorod, Nizhny, Nizhny is fine. But you know what the Landschmitz have? Sheer fucking quantity. They're even up here. Let's check in on Asia. The Seleucids, they're making their way across the Ganges River. Indian Romans, they're coming back through Sindh and Gujarat, but are they going to be able to? Ling Sang is still dedicating down here for some reason. Well, actually, no, they're going for Malaya. And they, they took down this entire section of the Indian Roman Empire. So, good on them. Indian Romans, though, if you can't get the, these troops over, they're just dead. They're, they're, they might as well just be not in the war. Seleucids? Are you sure you want to stick around? Are you sure? Let's see that quality comparison check. Seleucids. Worse in every single way. And they got stack wiped. Oh boy. Eesh. Sirhind, like, again, it's gonna be another stack wipe. There's no leader. Yep. Seleucids, man, slipping up. They're not slipping up in the defense of their homeland, though. How many troops are you dedicating over here? And what are you doing? Oh, that's the Channel Islands. Well, they can defend it. Because uh, the Landschmidt Navy is pretty shit. Now, Orgaya is over here, too. They want to... They want to get Novgorod out of this war. They want Nizhny to profit. And they also want Sevlion to profit from Novgorod's defeat. I can completely see the reasoning on that. But... And Novgorod and the Lanschknets, they're in the step. They know that they, hey, they're dedicating over at Novgorod proper. Let's just swing around south to Taklimata, maybe Saka, and let's go in through to, like, Kazan or something. It's a reasonable assessment. Our guy wants that V-board down. What's this? Torzok? If they can get the capital, they're golden. Uh, oh. Because, sure, why not? Napoleonic Italy going at their fucking... Or guy in it. I just... Oh, Taker is no longer in this war. Were they ever? No, it's a separate war. Separate war. I just... Not much is happening right now. They're just reorganizing their forces. Seleucids, they're trying to consolidate and probably get ready for another push into the Indian Romans. But the Indian Romans, they're, 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 they're just caught in between two fronts. Defending over here, maybe pushing in a little, but at the same time, pushing into Tibet, maybe pushing in a little further to Chengdu. But I mean, at the same time, Ling Sang is down here. They're ready to go. They can pull back if they need to. And the Landschnitz, how is everything going over here? That siege is still progressing. Torzok, it's about to go down. Novgorod is under siege. Landschnitz, like, as much as you're dedicating over here, it might not be for anything. But, oh no, where did those forces go? I 
I don't know where they went. I'm gonna check real quick. 245,000. Yeah, now uh, the Lajnets are dedicating to the invasion of Scandinavia. But again, like I said, if Orgaya and company can get Novgorod out, that's a done deal. They've profited. There's not much else they can do. We're going to 1780, man. Like, <laughs> we're going to 1780. Vitebsk is on. Vitebsk is down. Dorzhok is down as well. The Viborg slowly coming down. And Novgorod itself. It's almost at a breaking point. And meanwhile, the Salukas are coming through the Khyber Pass. Bro, it's a fort. It needs to be broken through, but once they break through, it's. They, they could leak all the way through. But the Indian Romans, they're going through. They're going through Tibet. They want to they wanna dedicate some more over into the east. And if they think that, you know, the Khyber Pass isn't that necessary, okay, that fort at Sir Hind, we'll see how long it holds, man. We'll see how long it holds. Dega is about to go down. Oh, I, this is still the capital. Ling Sai never moved our capital. Okay. There's peace. There's peace with one side. <laughs> and now they're just at war with the Imperium, which isn't an issue. Oh, man. That was fun. That was fun to see. Some actual skirmishing between the three giants. Uh, but, yeah. It's... <laughs> that was fun. Novgorod? Novgorod has been taken down. Viborg has been taken down. The rest of Novgorod proper is open to be sieged. Lanschknets have just, like, they've been, they, they've faltered. They've let it progress too far. Novgorod is probably really asking for peace at this point. And like, the, like, sure. Okay, the Lanschknets are also invading Scandinavia. It's taking a hell of a long time. It really is. And Napoleonic Italy thinking, oh yeah, I can go after Argaia. They're not gonna. They're, they're too busy. No, they're not. Napoleonic Italy. Your navy is shit compared to Argaia and Sevlion. You're not going to get past. And even if you do, good luck transporting enough troops to actually take things down. Yeah, Lanschkans just BTFOing Argaian troops. It's not really a competition there now, is it? Nizhny, what do you even want? You want a lot of land. Which is understandable. Older brother is uh, always someone to punch at, to strike at. Let's go to speed four. I'm very curious what the map is going to look like after Novgorod gets pieced out. Daklimata? No, it's uh, they're hired out. Right, right, right. I keep thinking, like, oh, yeah, they, they, they got hired out? Or, I mean, they joined the war? No way. Taklimata's pacifist. Sevleon. Peace Novgorod out, I'm telling you. Peace him out now. Otherwise, you might regret it. Nizhny's siege down, oh boy. Oh, Seltown's actually making move, like a slight move into uh, Landschnet's proper territory. What the fuck is this? Why? Why do you even have that? You shouldn't. Is there any, war any other wars going on? Low countries are going after Orgaya as well. Why? What is this? What? Why are you being mean to my boy? What has my boy done to you? Exist? Is that it? 
Oh god, sadly I'm not joining for some of these, like, bro, I don't know what they want with you, but I can't be a part of all this. Sort your own shit out. Oh lord. Alright, sadly, if you don't peace Novgorod out now, it's, uh, it's kind of on you. Like, a separate piece for Novgorod would do you some good. Uh, yeah, Orgaya, you... <laughs> oh, there... Is Paradox in this, too? Okay, let, it's better to just see the diplomatic map mode. So Paradox is at war with them. That's why they are sieging down this land over here. Or trying to. Oh, my goodness. Savleon. You let the enemy come back into form, and now they're unseaging Novgorod's lands. Oh. For shame, my child. For shame. Granted, they haven't got the capital yet, but they're about to. They're about to get Vibor as well. I guess my child has its moments like everyone else of being an idiot. At the very least, like, these forts can buy Orgaya time, but my child might actually be in trouble. I'll extend this part out a little bit longer because I want to see what fucking happens, man. I am personally invested. This is also... Okay, so they're in the Napoleonic one, but that's it. <laughs> Anything else is just... No. Novgorod did get pieced out. Sevleon did take some land. Nizhny got pieced out. And now it's just Sevleon. Wait, what? What do you have to do? Is it just... Oh, it's enough battles. I don't... I fucking I hate that system. You know what you know what that system is. I'm not gonna say the name because otherwise it's gonna activate. Ugh. My boy, Orgaya, no. Oh. Are they still friendly? Nope. Neutral. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Bro brothers now turning swords on each other. Oh shit. Oh no. The world just had to pile on. Oh, I, this is terrible. This is. God damn it. Sevillon is still in this uh, against Napoleonic Italy, but other than that, it's just. I'm sad now. I'm sad. But if this kind of like... Oh, I didn't even see this. Sadly unlocked most of its land holdings too. Damn. But uh, if this tells tells me anything, it tells me that uh, Argaia might actually lose this land too. And maybe more to Sevleon because I don't think Sevleon wants to uh, let them live either. I really do think if Sevleon joined those other wars, it would have been much better. But, nah, just let, let your brother out to dry, just fine. I'll, I'll, I want to see, I want to see how they exactly, they cut up my child, you know. We're going to go until these wars, com wars conclude, because god damn it, they're just, ugh. They're actually not getting as much war score as I thought. Like, I, I really thought they would be getting more. What, what's going on? Like, Argaya doesn't have that much land. If you get a, get, get a handle on this stuff in West Africa, they're pretty much done.
Oh, so Stide is probably not even going to take that much land. I, I, I'm assuming it's just going to be those provinces, provinces back in North America. I could be wrong, though. Three point two percent attrition. They're all just waiting. You apparently have so many troops left, but where? Imperium against yeah, Ling Sang still. Actually, how is the revolution spreading? It's... It's spread a lot. Yeesh. I mean, the the Isles are safe. But everywhere else in, in Europe, it's pretty much spreading. Dacia is safe for the most part. But, uh... Ugh. Anything else in Europe? Or Asia? Nope. Really nothing. Seventeen eighty five is the latest we're going to go. <laughs> Nizhny still wants some, a whole lot more. Who are you allied with? Just Novgorod. No one else. Napoleonic Italy with Dacia. Sevleon is licking its wounds. Just just give me the bad news, Doc. Just give me the bad news. I know my child is finished. Okay, I'm actually going to take a look. Like, where are your forces? You apparently have a bunch. They're all down here. Really? You were just hiding them down here, were you? Or maybe it was like the only place they could recruit from. Who knows? Who knows? Oh yeah, Kikonja's dead. I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Kikonja is dead. Bosnia? Mm hmm. Loon? Who's a uh, rival to the new. I mean, the Landsknets? Napoleonic Italy, Argentina, and Dacia. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, they've taken my child bit by bit. But re really? Really? Nothing down here. It was just all that land over there. Nothing in Southeast Africa, nothing in West Africa. But no, we're just gonna take chunks of your heartland because, eh, fuck you. <laughs> it's weird. It's just, it's weird to me. Like, the capital, that, that that's safe. But, like, the neighboring lands, just, yeah, it's fine. We don't want that. Why would we want that? Uh, we'll stop in about July of this year. Well, at least Argaya gets some reprieve. And they don't really, like, truly need this land. It's for recruitment purposes, and sh sure. For base tax and money, sh like, sure. But this is kind of a trap for, like, the Low Countries and Steid. Because if they land a bunch of forces here, and then they don't take them off if another war pops up, that's on them. It's sort of a death trap in a, in a sense. It's uh, it is a a deep blow to my child nonetheless. So I am not discounting that at all. And even deeper of a cut is the fact that 
My children hate each other now. Alright. Neutral. No, they're neutral, so maybe. Accept the religion? Enemy of my enemy. Okay. I'm just curious what they think. Okay. Well, oh, gave away our provinces. Oh, oh, that's, that's not good. <laughs> uh, who's actually supporting that independence still? No, it's just straight up. Like, yeah, we want independence. Dreams of liberty, bitch. Alright. So that's gonna conclude part 13. That was a very eventful part. I think probably the most eventful part so far. Um, Landscans growing ever stronger. My children suffering at the hands of foreigners. The only child that has seen nothing but positivity is Castilla. Literally the only one. Everyone else, like, been picked on in some way or been the victim of a war. Uh, this is pretty much clear evidence of it. And so is this. John Santa Cruz down here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the uh, Republica de Yucatan. No. Nothing left. Nothing left. <laughs> uh, just what happens in these AI only campaigns, though, man. The weak get uh, get either subjugated and conquered or something else. So that'll be it for now. A very long part. I hope you enjoy this long part. We have the military hegemony being claimed by the Landschnitz. Are we really surprised though? And the economic hegemon being claimed by the Napoleonic Italy. And of course we have the leaderboard. In first place we have the Landschnitz. The second place is the second place. Second place is taken by the Indian Romans. Third place is the New Imperium. Fourth is Steid. Fifth is Taker. Sixth is Napoleonic Italy. Seventh is Sevlion. Eighth is Ling Sang. And that's gonna be it for now. I hope you all join me for the final part. That will be part 14. So... Let's just let's just bring up the leaderboard and we'll be done. I'm a, I'm a little exhausted from that from that casting, that commentating. <laughs>